let's just recall Green's theorem real quick. So remember, if uh, if you have a region D and it's bounded by some curve, right, and then we needed positive orientation, so the the curve is going counterclockwise around this. We said that the integral over C, and then we were having it in this form, right, the P dx plus Q dy. But don't get you know, don't be afraid to realize that it works for this, right? We you know, convert it back to this form, the, the f dot dr form. Uh, but the point is, or the theorem says, again, there's some conditions which I won't worry about, that this line integral, right, is equal to the double integral over the region that's bounded by that closed uh, curve, and then what? I think it's QX, right, minus PY, and then DA. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So let's just try, we did just one example, one simple example last time. Let's try another one that's hopefully not too much worse. Uh, straightforward use of it. Um, so find the integral of xy dx plus x squared y cubed dy. Where c is the triangle with vertices Zero, zero, one, zero, and one, two, and with positive orientation. So again, without even looking at what this region is, we're saying we got a triangle, we're tracing around it, and so we'll come back to that in a second, but this is going to be the double integral over D, right, there's your P, there's your Q, so what's Q sub X? What? Q sub X, 2X, what? 2X, Y cubed, minus P sub Y, which is X. No matter what that region was, we could do the same thing. It has to be a closed region, right? The line integral needs to be the integral around some loop. <clears throat> and then let's just go over here. So draw that triangle and figure out what functions you need to set your bounds. I'm going to do, let's do it in this order, dy, dx. So it's 0, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 2. And so it's this triangle here, right? And so you just need to figure out that that line is y equals 2x, and then you're set 0 to 1. And 0 to 2x. 0 to 2x. And then I think we're OK from there, right? You're just going to plug in. You're going to integrate with respect to y, so you'll get y to the 2x, y to the 4th over 4, and then minus x, y, and then you're just plugging in x, so you're just going to get powers of x and some constants. So I think I'll leave that one there. Okay? All right. Uh, let's try one more here. Evaluate the integral of uh, y cubed dx minus x cubed dy, where c 
is one clockwise revolution of the circle of radius two centered at It's not telling you where you, it doesn't really matter where you start. You're just doing one loop around that circle, right? And so the key thing here is what's true about the orientation there. It's backwards, right? So you have the wrong orientation on this one. And so when you apply this, so let's call, if we call this region D, remember, so C is this direction, right? If we, what did we, we called the boundary of D, right, was, was I'll just write it this way, is negative C. Does that make sense? And so your theorem for, or Green's theorem is for the boundary, right, for the positively oriented curve. And so we know that this is negative the integral, I'm just going to write it this way, of the boundary. Watch out, right? Negative C. Right? So you can keep it like that, but you just have to make sure you throw that negative in front of it. That makes sense? So again, this theorem will be useful for positive or negatively oriented curves. You just have to make sure you adjust with the negative. So then we apply Green's theorem here, and so It'll be negative, the double integral over D, and then what will go inside of there? Negative 3x squared minus 3y squared, right? DA, and so you can pull out the negative 3, just get a 3 out front, and now we're integrating over a circle x squared plus y squared, so what's the natural way to do that? From zero to two, from zero to two point. Right. So to do, to, to convert over to polar, right? Mm -hmm. And so the x squared plus y squared will become r squared, and then the d a r d, right? r d r d theta, and then zero to two, zero to two pi, okay? And let's just, this one's easy, so let's just finish it off. So what do we get? R to the, it's R cubed, right? So R to the fourth over four. Plug in the two, so that should give you four, right? 16 over four. So you got four times three, so you end up with 24. Yeah. two pi, 12 C theta, and so yeah. 24. Is that okay? Let's look at other regions we have encountered before. Um, just sorry, regions with holes. And so when we talked about positive orientation, right? We were saying you move around counterclockwise. And then I also said you should think of it as that your region's always to your left. Okay? And so when we uh, when we have a hole in some region, right? The positive orientation of that hole is then moving this way, right? So it's now clockwise because you're keeping your region you're interested in to your left always. Does that make sense? So you're, you're inside the the inside of the region is always to your left if you walk around. This does that make sense? Okay. <clears throat> and so, um, I didn't even bother writing the whole theorem down. Um, so this is 
Theorem 15.42, which basically just says the same, uh, the same result is true. So the boundary of your surface is considered sort of tracing both curves, right? And so if you curve up your region. So if this is D, then the boundary of D is sort of hitting both of those curves with this orientation. And I'll just, I'll write it like this maybe. Okay. So if you think of coming along here like this, you can break this up into two sections. You can say, you come and then you go down this way. Okay. So that would be, right, you'd have one counterclockwise rotation of this guy, of the D1. Does that make sense? And then if you followed this guy and then went backwards across there like that, you'd get a counterclockwise rotation of the region for D2. Does that make sense? And that would give you your whole region. And so Green's theorem would apply to both of the D1 part and the D2 part. Does that make sense? And so the, the theorem at 15.42 um, and I don't want to write down all the details, just says right, that your line integral uh, over a region like this Again, you've got to adjust orientations if things are pointing in the wrong direction. But that line integral is the same thing as the double integral over that region with that hole in it, over the whole region of the Q sub x minus P sub y. Yeah, Q sub x. Just try one example here, and then we'll maybe do some other things. Okay, so all right, let's just stick with the same one we just did. So the same line integral, except for now, or the same stuff on the inside, y cubed dx minus x cubed dy. And now inside, let's just put, um, or for, our, for our c, our c consists of this curve, circle of radius 2, right? And then inside, circle of radius 1, going, going backwards along that one. So try this for a second. Again, Green's theorem in this version, right, where our setup is correct. The outside's going counterclockwise, the inside piece is going clockwise. So you're just doing the double integral over that region. And again, we'll see once you do it, shifting to polar coordinates makes life quite easy. through this one quickly. So again, Green's theorem says it becomes what? Negative 3x squared minus 3y squared, right? dA, and just like the last one, you can pull out the negative 3 
the x squared plus y squared becomes r squared, r dr d theta, and now the bounds are just what? Well, from 1 to 2. 1 to 2 and 0 to 2 pi, right? Does that make sense? <coughs> And I think this one's a really easy one to see what I was saying before, right? If you think of taking your curve like this, right, that would bring you around here and then around this curve would do one loop and then if you went backwards, you'd get this. And notice for your line integral, I, I kind of waved my hands at this before, you're, really, you're essentially doing two line integrals, right? You're doing the line integral around the outside and then the line integral around the inside. but if you think of it with this, with these, you know, two directional things, they'll cross each other out, right? Because you're going to integrate in one direction and then you're going to integrate in the other direction. So they'll cancel. And so essentially integrating around this and then this is the same as the, as the uh, double integral. Yeah. All right. So let's do, um, we'll do two more things here. The first one I want to do is, um, oh. Is 16 out of your book? I just wanted to pull up the picture so I don't have to drive myself. In fact, it'll be quick. So I'm going to squeeze it in here. Okay. So 16, it's just a, you know, you. Use Green's theorem, but you kind of don't have everything in this sort of natural way. So you got a curve here, C1 and then C2, right? And so notice that doesn't give you exactly what you want, right? C one of them's got the correct orientation positive, the C2's got negative orientation. And then they tell you what the integral of Q sub x dA is and what the integral of P sub y dA over that thing. They tell you what the integral of P is uh, along C1, and then you're supposed to find uh, the full integral along C1. That makes sense. Oh, sorry. They give you what P was along C2. Okay. So, Might just be the color. Yeah. Or maybe we're closer to this Ah, uh, so let's uh any other directions here. So let's just so what is what does Green's theorem state? That the integral the line integral, right? So that plus the integral over negative C2, which is just negative the integral over C2 of f dot dr. And I guess maybe I lied to you here when I said I should have enough room here because this is getting pretty tight. 
should be the double integral, right, over the d of your, well, what you wanted the, the, the q sub x minus p sub y. Okay. And so that was, some of that stuff is given to you, and you're supposed to find this piece here, right? So let's... Uh, So if we squeeze or fill in the stuff we know. So we want this guy, right, minus integrals over C2, we have that dr, and then we get, right, the double integral of qx dA minus double integral so y, dA, and so we know some stuff on the left, we know, or on the right, we know both pieces here, right, which are 2 and 2 minus 6, is that okay? And then this is what we want. Do we know that piece? Why is it negative 1? So what we were told, so this should feel a little bit weird on the surface because that's not what's given to you, right? If they told you what the integral was over C2 of FDR, you'd be like, okay, this is great, right? But they're not giving you that. So let's come off to the side and think about that for a second. So what's the integral over C2 of um, F dot dr? So by definition, it's what? The integral over C2 of P dx plus Q dy, right? We're told this piece, right? The integral of the, Q, of the P dx. Why is that good enough? So I'm going to claim this. This is equal to C2 P uh, dx. It's turned up to a negative one. Why is that statement true? Why is this? Assume this was negative 1, then we're going to get our C1 over f dot dr, right? Which we want. Which will be what? Negative 4, so positive 1, so it'll be negative 5, is that okay? But why, why do we know that the integral over C2 of f is the same as just the integral of, of p? So it has something to do with the way C2, or where C2 is. Yeah, so C2 is, is horizontal, right? So it's coming horizontal. So what's, what's the dy? Dy's change in your y values, right? What's the change in your y's here? It's always zero, right? We're staying horizontal. And so that dy is always going to give you zero. In fact, if you, I mean, that we're not told how big this circle is. But if, you know, you put it at the origin, your parameterization would just be, right, negative x, or it would be x, I guess. Um, I guess it would be negative x, right? No, yeah, yeah. It would be negative x because you want to go backwards, comma, y, and then you just set your range, or comma, zero. And so the point is the dy itself is always zero. Does that make sense? So try those ones, 15 and 17. They don't have that same trick in them, but they have the same idea of where they give you certain pieces, right? And you need to write up some version of, of Green's theorem and then play around with that. And so try those and bring them next time if you have uh, any questions. And the last uh, problem I want to do for this section is just kind of going in the other direction. 
this okay? Everyone okay? So what is it? All right. <clears throat> So this is something I guess that you would rarely do, but every once in a while, this is a nice technique to be able to pull up. So area here. So find the area bounded by Find that area bounded by this curve. So what kind of curve is this? Uh, Ellipse. Ellipse. Right? What are the x-intercepts? Three. three and negative three and the y's. Two and negative. I'm, I'm going to exaggerate here. Oops. So we get oval shape moving through there. And so you could solve for y squared here, right? Multiply, you get 4x squared. Um, so you can get 1 minus 4x squared over 9 is y squared. And then take square roots, and that will give you your plus and minus. And you could try to integrate that thing. Um, right, because you're, so maybe I'll just set that up. So one way would be to do the integral from negative 3 to 3, right? Area would be the integral from negative 3 to 3 of the top, which would be the square root of 1 minus 4, x squared over 9. Um, Are you sure it wouldn't be 4 minus? Oh, you're, you're right, 4 minus. 4 minus that. I'm not going to do it this way, so I don't care that much. But yes. And then it'll be minus the negative, so you'll get two of these guys. Does that make sense? And so when you look at this, how do you integrate that guy? What technique do you have to use? You have to do a trig substitution, um, which can be a little bit painful. So you could get there with this. I'm not saying this is impossible, but let's just say it's, it's ugly. Okay, so let's try to use Green's theorem to go backwards. So Green's theorem said right, that the integral over a region was equal to the line integral around the boundary. So if we want the area, let's just call this region D. Okay. So the area is the double integral over D of just dA, right? And so I want to try to use uh, Green's theorem on this, okay? And so I want this, this should equal the line integral, right, over the boundary of D, right? And so the setup was this, of some P dx plus Q dy. The problem is I don't know what the P and the Q are, right? And what do I need them to be? I need them to be something where when I apply Green's theorem, I get this, right? I just get one back. Does that make sense? And so, so I need, need one to be Q sub X minus P sub Y. Does that make sense? So all you have to do is come up with a function Q functions Q and P that do this, and then you're done, okay? And there's a bunch of different options. One would be to let P equal what? Zero and let Q be, well, Q sub X should be one. You could just pick that as your option, right? Does that make sense? And then you'll, you'll get this integral. So let's do, let's pick this one as our choice. So this will become, we need to do the integral over the boundary of just X dx. Let's see if we can get there. This one. Oh, sorry. x dy, right? Okay. So, what we don't have, what we didn't do yet, was to get a parameterization. So now we're just going to use our sort of old school uh, line integral with this one. So, 
how, what's a parameterization for this? X, Y. So again, X squared, or sine and cosine will give you a circle, right? If you just let X be sine and, and Y be cosine. So how do you get the ellipse? So cosine. What is that? So cosine. Um, three cosine and two sine. And now let's make sure, does that go counterclockwise? Right, if we're going to follow this, we need to make sure. So that does start right at three, zero, and then it goes down. So that works perfect. Does that make sense? So we're going to use this parameterization. And so up here, we just need the integral from zero to two pi. The x can get replaced with three cosine of t. And what's the dy? No, D, dy, so two cosine of t, right? No, derivative of cosine is positive, right? integral is negative. Is that okay? Oh, you're right. Okay, so we end up with the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 6 cosine squared dt of t dt. And this is a good time to remember, how do we integrate cosine squared? We convert it to something over 2. 1 plus cosine. 1, not minus, plus. Sine is the negative 1, right? Okay. And so you guys remember, one of them is plus, one of them is minus. And no, cosine of 0 is 1, right? So you want this to be 1 when you plug in 0. So we end up with just three times that, right? And then when you integrate that, you get t, and then the integral of cosine is sine. So in this case, it becomes sine of 2t over 2. It doesn't matter because at 2 pi and at 0, sine is 0, right? So that whole thing's gone, and you just end up with 6 pi. Questions on that? And uh, let me just point out, right, you could have, this was, this was completely arbitrary. We were just picking a P and a Q that made us get one when we used our formula, right? So we could have just as well, if I set Q equal to zero, what would P be then? negative y, that would have worked, right? I could have also done, I could have said p is negative 1 half y and q is 1 half x, and that would work just fine as well, right? So the point was that was pretty arbitrary the way I chose this. I just wanted something with, that the q sub x piece of y was, was 1. And then once you have that, you just write out this formula. Things move out of there pretty all right, any questions on that? So that's kind of the last tricky thing you might see in this section. Um, so let's stop there for 15.4.